This is the joy of doing things live. When you do run into a bit of a technical glitch, you get to uh, reboot, hard reset and start again. Welcome to our Monday Night Incident Report, which is turning into quite a fun little banter and debate with Jonathan Benz and Tasman Pepper and myself, Marius Roberts, as we kind of look back at what was another exciting round of racing in the ATK Pro Series. We were in France yesterday running uh, at Paul Ricard. Um, two fantastic races. It was great to see Junior McCall and Zaire Essa, who both came back from third place finishes at Zandvoort the week before to regain the top step of the podium. Great racing, a track that I wasn't that excited about, to be honest. I've had a bit of a negative perception around it, but a track that proved very, very technical and it wasn't all about the 1.8 kilometer back straight. Jonathan Bentz, um, a lot of incidents in particular in the Pro-Am. And, um, you know, my take on it was that it's literally just a circuit with double apexes and um, guys not realizing that and being just a little bit too eager to get involved in a move that actually doesn't exist. For sure. We had um, double the amount of incidents in Pro-Am versus Pro this week. So that's an interesting stat there. And, you know, um, I think uh, it's quite a shame that we need to penalize these guys whenever like a mistake is made you know a guy will make a mistake and um literally break like a fraction of a second late and the car in front of him is spun around so it's unfortunate that we have to apply a penalty which says you are guilty of making an error and um you know when it's just for a little mistake but that is exactly what we are doing here we're replicating real life motorsport and it's 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 not so much um, that we're placing um, a hard and fast guilt onto a driver, but we are trying to show the drivers what is um, correct, what is yeah. wrong to do in a race and trying to replicate um, real life racing in that we're trying to help the drivers grow and learn what is better, a better way of driving. Well, when we were having that wonderful conversation a few minutes ago amongst ourselves, not realizing that we weren't actually going live, we were having our issues. That's yeah. what Tasman was saying. We're waiting for her to get back on the chat as well. That's what she was saying. You know, at the end of the day, this is not a game. It's a simulation. And, yeah. you know, for, for, for the, the proper racing drivers, a, a mistake like that, you're going to get yourself the same type of penalty. And I think it just teaches you um, to really respect the craft and the concentration that the pros have. To be able to go lap after lap for 50 minutes and eliminate those uh, those errors and i think if, if i was any of the any of the pro-am guys go and watch the last 15 minutes of the pro race i'm going to bring in um that fantastic battle with uh, jason upsmeyer who um you know literally had no tires left but he had a setup where the car was super quick down the straight leslie oliphant had all the grip was putting him under massive pressure couldn't pass him in the normal overtaking spots but they gave each other respect. They gave each other space. You know, he knew Jason's running that line because that is the line. Not thinking, oh, he's made a mistake and, and putting his nose into places. And there were a few times where he literally backed out of the one in particular where he would have made contact with Jason and, and spun him out. Yeah. And I think that for me was real mature racing. And that is what we just didn't really see in the programs. The guys kind of almost forgot where they were on the circuit and thought, yeah. this guy's running wide. Meanwhile, he's not. He's actually on the line and uh, and got themselves uh, involved in some in some madness there so let's get into it we've got we've got two pro-ams um talk us through the yeah. the first one let's have a look and hopefully tasman uh, can join us because you know how much i love fighting with tasman pepper <laughs> yeah we definitely need that uh, conflict between you guys tonight got to get the views man yeah so um okay first up tonight um two incidents um in pro-am um, I think they're pretty um, self-explanatory in, in what happens, but the first one is between Mackenzie and Skitter. Okay, so let's have, let's have a look. Obviously, Ian McKenzie in the Porsche and Sean Skitter in the in the Ferrari. Uh, this is Skitter yeah. and Mackenzie, yeah. Yeah, so there we've got the pink Porsche of Mackenzie and Skitter on the outside in the, in the traditionally colored Ferrari. Let's have a look at what's going to go down here. Now this was a little bit further back in the in the pack, so we never actually saw this live during the race because we were yeah. chasing the action uh, up front. Yeah, you see uh, Mackenzie gets Ooh. a great run on Skitter down the line, and then their paths appear to cross here. Yeah? Wow! Unfortunately, ending the race for Mackenzie effectively uh, massive damage for him. He had to pit for this. 
I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Under, I'm not really understanding what where Skitter was planning on going there. Yeah, you can see Mackenzie um, slowly drifting over to the right hand side of the track. I mean, I think he's holding his line, doing what he should on the right hand side of the track. I think that um, Skitter was. I don't know, perhaps just not paying attention to the fact that he was closing up on Kenzie there. Yeah, because, you know, usually, what just from what I've been picking up and chatting to some of the drivers, uh, we saw it last week in Zonfoot, when the guys do go door to door, the game the game's pretty good in terms of that. You, you can, but obviously, Skits are leaning on that back three quarter. Yeah, it's just going to put him into a bit of a spin. But it's just, it's bizarre because Mackenzie is perfectly lined up for turn one, which is a left hander. And uh, you rightly um, assume that Sean Skitter got good drive out of that final tight right-hander, and he's got the pass done. He just needs to stay there, and uh, and he'll have turn one locked off. So pretty cut and dry, really. Yeah, I think pretty cut and dry. And um, the oh, penalty no was... No, no deviation <laughs> from McKenzie at all. No. Sorry, just yeah, looking so, at that. I mean... so that, that really helped makes our job easier in that case, for sure. Uh, In-race penalty applied of 15 seconds to Skitter there. Did you did you issue that? I did, yes. Okay, because I know later on, and we'll talk about this when we get to the pros, there were some issues in terms of your replays, which is why we weren't able to put some of those penalties in. Because I know there were drive-throughs and that type of stuff that were implemented yeah. by the game, especially for cutting corners here, yeah, because it is the sort of track where that can happen. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason to squeeze a guy um, down the straight when you when you're already up the inside and turn one is a left-hander. You've got you've got the move done. Yeah. Right. yeah, like I said, I think it was just um, he wasn't aware that they were closing up so much. They do have a radar on screen, which does show your position in relation to the other guys. So, yeah, maybe maybe just the, the fact that, um, you know, physics wise, you know, the game applying net code to each driver, I think this would never have happened in real life. So, yeah, you, 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 yes and no though because I mean the minute you touch a car like that it's very easy I mean you look you look where the pressure is I mean that contacts kind of on the on the door um, onto the rear wheel so very easy to get the guy um, turned around the wrong way but for me w what's just confusing you've got your pit boxes to show you where your straight line is and Mackenzie's in his pit box have a look great so there's absolutely no reason for Skitter to come across. I don't know if he got distracted. Maybe his girlfriend, wife, mother walked in and said, "Hey," and uh, and and he just he, he kind of had a bit of a fade to the right there. But yeah, cut cut yeah. and dry that one. Cut Hello, Tasman. I think Tasman's back. Are we ready? Okay, but that, that's cool. So he got a 15 second penalty. So that that's that's in done. Race, yeah, so okay. Nothing, no, no further action on that one. Cool. Okay. Let's have a look at our next pro am incident. Yes, next pro in, um, incident is between Walker and Roots. Um, yeah, I mean, this one, I think, happens in... Yeah, we look at Roots in the Audi. He just made a mistake there in that... In that turn. Turn. So Walker got a good run on him here. Walker moves in front. Oh. Immediately, um, there's a bit of a problem runs wide and then they have a second uh, the second incident is not between them it is Jabir Jabir coming up behind them and yeah what a proper nudge under braking there as well <laughs> yeah that's the first half of the incident so the second incident is the third party of the Mercedes coming into play so interesting um, observation there is when Walker cuts him off heading into the corner as soon as he's in front he hits the brakes and that was inevitable to happen yeah yeah i'd, li so, I'd like to, i'd like to see i'd like to see that again in terms of uh, where he's yeah. break where, where he's breaking for the corner yeah, this is the second part of that incident so this is the stuff yeah. we we're talking about earlier where guys see what they think is a door being left open but it's not because it's a double apex or a late apex and the guy's running that different line so yeah he outbraked himself yeah. completely there so that's a that's a bit of a no-no but this is what i wanted to see here because um, Nico definitely made a made a mistake running a little bit too deep in that turn 11. Yeah. yeah that's part two. Can we go back to part one, if you don't mind, Daniel? I just want to have a look at what, what happened here. So, yeah, we see Ritz running very, very wide, uh, turn 11, coming back onto the track. Walker's now got the run on him. But this is where I want to see with that direction change. Oh, a little lean. And then as Walker gets in front to take the line, I mean, which is a defensive line. It's not a, it's not a line that a regular ah. racing line. 
Jonathan, I I just think he's making that move too soon to 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 cut off to close off that line because if you think they've just gone door to door, so you've got to know the car's actually next to you or on your rear three quarter. So it's quite early to come across and 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 try and seal off that line, and it's also yeah. not the line for that corner. Yeah, you, so you, you know what I mean. Be defensive, and I mean it. Yeah. The, the contact was inevitable because as he as he closed the door, he hits the brakes. Yeah, um, uh, and it's not that he broke he broke early, but it was that they were so close already. So I think this this Jabir side of the um, incident is pretty cut and dry. Outbraked himself. Yeah, um, and we did. We saw we saw a lot of that. You see, like there, the guys get, the guy, yeah the guys get excited because they think the guys missed his 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 apex, but he actually hasn't. He's letting the car run wide like he should. Um, we saw a lot of this in the pro and the guys ready to fall over each other. So yeah, that's yeah. what do you what's what penalty you issuing for for that? Uh, that will be for you, Bear, because I mean that that's he's made a mistake. So I don't know if you're going to just what do you add time to his to yeah, his positions at the we, end. We add we add time, and that that um, will be inconsistent um, to be, be consistent, consistent with. Yeah. with with previous incidents, there'll be a 15 second penalty. Okay. Um, so well, it's unfortunate. I'd, yeah. But this this one's the tricky side of things because the car behind generally is the car that is responsible for the braking zone. You see, but that's the second one, eh? So th th that's their th now their third contact because they had contact coming out of 11 door to door. Yeah. Then, well, those, yeah, those those are acceptable in terms of uh, paint. Yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah, I've got no issue with that. But then there is the the left hander where Walker comes across and and yeah, chops yeah, roots a little bit, and then there's the next one. So there's actually four points of contact. We don't worry about the first one because that was door to door. But have a look. This is the second. Oh, okay. Let's see where we are. Yeah. It's okay, now we're back. Yeah, we are. We back. So let's not, Daniel. Let's not play this one because we know what's happened there. He's he's 15 seconds. That's cut and dry. It's these, yeah. It's these two that we want to that we really want to have a have a squiz at. Yeah. Okay. After this shot, then it should uh, okay. reset to the beginning. Okay. Here we go. So this, I want to see this first bit of contact. Not this bit now because this is racing. That's fine. That's all good. Yeah. See, because we don't see him hitting the brakes there. It's the next one where we see him going on the brakes. No, 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 that yeah. was it. That was it, yeah. See, he has the next one, yeah. Uh, this is the start of it again. So so that's the first, that's where he brakes as ah. he goes in front of him. Um, so yeah, you'll oh. see him come across and then brakes. So sure, it's, a, it's, a, it's a flipping tricky one because he did go defensive. I think he kind of moved across. Uh, uh, like for me, he, he should have yeah. been aware that there's a guy there. And what we've spoken about so often in these incident reports is just to, you're also preserving yourself and looking after yourself in the race. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's kind of put himself in a bit of a tricky situation there because he's just had door-to-door -door contact. So you know the driver is there. To then yeah. move across radically and get on the brakes, you're opening yourself up to, to getting clattered, which is exactly what happened. So... Yes. I feel there's a bit of blame for Walker here as well, you know? Yes, no, I, I actually completely agree with that because I think this that particular first incident is going to, we should call that a racing incident because yeah. um, because he cut him off and hit the brakes immediately. Um, it was inevitable, the contact, and then, you know, and but then they were dicing door to door, so Ritz as well. But you see, that's what's that, that's. I mean, this is a perfect example of that corner because you can go two cars through that corner, no problem. So, I mean, th that that's the point I'm trying to make is that Walker knows that Roots is there. He he could easily have just left him the space, and we could have gone around this corner door to door, and he would have had the advantage on the next right hander because he would have been on the inside again. So, that's the kind of race craft that we're talking about. Whereas, you know, now you're trying to go defensive, but the minute you get on the brakes again, you really are trusting the guy behind you. Um, yeah. you, you break, you break. I mean, not that he's break testing him, but but he is. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, that. Sure. oh, what, so, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. I think I think racing incidents between Roots and Walker. 
Taz, what do you think? I see you've joined us. What were you doing? Oh, your hair, God. making coffee? What was going on? <laughs> I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, well, you, you, okay. Have you been watching what's been going on here? Yeah, I see that's, that you guys made a call on that incident already. Yeah, that's easy. This is the one. Uh, we'll get a replay of it now. Um, it's again going into that left hander. That's a bit of a late apex, and um, yeah, Walker gets super I defensive. See, I up. see Roots actually hits him up the up the rear twice, not just one. No, that's a replay. I made the same mistake. <laughs> uh, Check yeah, it. This, this is it. Yeah. So as he pulls across, hits the brakes, and then that's that's the incident. You'll see the you'll see the brake you'll see the brakes now, Taz, as he as he moves across. But see that corner. Oh, you can go this one, yes. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, you see. I mean, you, the Lexus obviously comes and pulls in front of him because he he's ahead, so he is actually allowed to do that. Yeah, um, he's not on. He's not on the racing line. He's gone defensive. Well, he's come on. Yeah, I mean, he has come in in front of him, which he is allowed to do. He hasn't. He he's obviously defending his position that he's just gained. So I don't see anything wrong with that. And the fact that, I mean, he hits the brakes, but I don't think he hits the brakes early. I think he hits the brakes because the corner's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, so, my, my, my issue that I have, though, Taz, they've come out of that corner and they've just gone door-to-door -door contact. So you know, as Walker, you know the guy's there. Yeah, 100% you know the guy's there, but you're not, you're not next to him. So there's no reason why you have to now go around the outside. If you've already made the move, you've made the move. You know, he, he made the move. He had enough space to move in front of him, and then he gets hit from behind. So I don't think that's necessarily his fault. I think if I had, if I had to make the same move and I had enough room to get in front to defend myself into the next corner, 100% I'm going to do it. Have a look at the corner here quickly, though. See, that's not the line through there at all. There's the apex now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It's not about. It's not about where he needs to hit the apex, though. He's going purposely to defend his position. I, there's I, absolutely I, nothing wrong with that. I get. I get you completely. But what we're trying to talk about here as well is guys also preserving themselves and being aware because you you come across and then that's not a normal line. Says so he is. He's breaking early because he wouldn't normally break there. The car would have run wide like Roots is on the line now car would have naturally run wide so roots is also now oh my why is he breaking now because that's not the normal line so i'm just saying you're just opening yourself up for contact when you are chopping across like that because yeah you, you know what i mean i know he's not in the wrong but i'm just like you also can you could have gone two cars through there very easily yeah, you could have, stayed he on could have gone he could have stayed on the right hand side and then but stayed it would have the given the, um Roots, see, yeah, yeah, but it would have given Roots that opportunity to dive back up his inside. And so that's yeah, the whole thing. I think he's obviously wanting to defend that position. You see, but this is what the Pro-Am guys were getting wrong because there is no overtake up the inside. That, that, that's my point. Um, and, and that's what we saw. I actually mentioned it earlier when you were offline. That fight we saw with the pros, with um, with Jason Absmeyer and, and, and Olifant. I mean, that is what they did so well is that they didn't get sucked into things like that. So if he saw Jason running that line, he knows that that's the racing line. So he doesn't go and put his nose in there because contact is inevitable. So my point here is if Walker just ran the racing line, Roots would have been compromised. He would have had no drive out of that corner and the deal would have been done and dusted and he would have had a gap going down the start finish straight. But to go and chop yeah. the guy here, it's not your, there's the racing line. You, you, you with me? So he actually, if he's in front, why does he need to go defensive on a place that isn't an overtaking spot? Yeah, I suppose. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I don't, I, like, I don't think. I don't think Walker's in the wrong. Um, but also, I also don't think Roots is in the wrong because yeah. of the fact that he has been cut off. Um, but Roots uh, Walker is also defending his position, so yeah. I don't think either of them are wrong, and I don't think either should receive a penalty for it. I mean, they both obviously lost out, however they did. Well, one, one thing that I appreciate about the accident is that, yeah, Walker was knocked wide, but there wasn't a lasting effect from it, so he didn't spin, lose massive amount of positions. This this incident where Jabeur went up the inside is where the obvious obvious yeah. Well, he's agreed. Uh, the advantage came in, yeah. yeah. So uh, I agree with that in that we call it a racing incident because Walker wasn't wrong, but then Roots wasn't wrong either. I mean, he could have maybe 
earlier, Greg yes. Sippert but I think earlier. he was already going for that move before, but, like, walk to yeah. close the door. Remember, guys, he, if you go, if you can take anyone else through there, no one is breaking where Walker breaks because that is not your normal line. So that's what that was is what surprised Roots because he would be running wider yeah. to take the outside line there. So that that's all I'm saying is like you've also got to be aware to live for another corner and a corner and a corner and not put yourself in those places. And my prime example here is what ended up happening on that next corner. Um, where he did get taken out that is what happens when you try and make an overtake on a, on a part of the track that you can't overtake so that's the point i made yeah like there is again a late apex so had walker have just stayed on his racing line roots wouldn't have been able to get the pass done anyway so my point is he didn't need to go and close the door and go defensive go defensive for what you've made the move already and you're going into a corner that nobody can pass on uh, it's yeah. just yeah that, that's all I think that yeah. they both just need to be aware of the people around them and okay. um, give space where space is, is needed. And I think everyone would get through the court and no issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's lock that one down. Racing incident sure. uh, for the first half of the incident and then a 15 second penalty for Jaber yeah. simply based on. Uh, consistency with other incidents and, and that that is what we saw a lot of in the in the proams is exactly yeah. that where the guys just putting themselves in positions that they're not meant to be in um yeah. and i really anyway hopefully they've learned it's a tricky it's a tricky track we haven't had a track like this before yeah okay so okay. let's move on to the next um incident which isn't an incident per se but it Happened in qualifying, and then there was a bit of discussion around this in the community uh, today, where a driver, Albertain, um, over, you know, it was the first lap of qualifying. Uh, everyone was preparing for their first hot laps, and um, all the drivers were spacing out as per the driver's briefing that we had before and telling everyone, listen, you got to make your own space before you start your hot laps. Don't come crying to us afterwards because somebody slowed you down on your hot lap because you didn't make space. So drivers were very aware of this. And so going into their first hot laps, they they were all, you know, uh, allowing space towards the end of the lap. So if we can watch this incident, well, it's not an incident per se, but I would call this a qualifying no-no. I mean, listen, it's not like you're struggling for space with 33 cars and a 5.8 kilometer track. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so he goes and slots himself in there, and now he's become a. Um, he's removed everybody else's. Sure. Well, was he not on a lap? No, this is first lap. So he wasn't on a lap, and they but, were getting yeah, in the way. Are, everyone's on the out lap, sorry. They're now crossing for the start for the first time. They're now cr coming yeah. up to the start finish for the first time to start a hot lap. Okay, so, okay. so in terms of incident wise, it's not something that we're, I mean, we're not going to apply a penalty. What he did was not illegal. He didn't crash into anybody. He didn't cause anybody but, disadvantage. But, but also while the Oaks dithering, you're going into the final two corners before you're about to start your first hot lap. You know, the Oaks by that stage should be building up a bit of momentum. If you want to slow down and muck around, do that on the back, the back part of the circuit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think it's just it's literally everyone just playing a waiting game. They're just letting the guy ahead go. Yeah. Get a run out of that last turn. So yeah. I mean, yeah. But this is not the first time that we've seen it. So I thought to, we we should speak about this now during this incident review because it's happened at the previous round as well, where drivers, um, you know, just do this while the other drivers are trying to make space for themselves. And it's only, in, in fairness, it's only happens in the f like first lap. So, yeah. so right. yeah, there was conversation about this today on social media about um, drivers doing this during qualifying. Yeah, you see, it's tricky, it says, because everyone's got a different build-up approach to starting their hot lap, you know? Um, it's not like you've got 10 seconds in Formula 1 and, and this is the, <laughs> you've only got one lap to get it done in. You know, they've got a long qualifying session, they can also hit the hard reboot. But, I mean, everyone approaches qualifying differently and he's obviously preferring to come in with momentum and now the guys in front, comes around a corner, there are three, car, three cars all backing up, getting ready for their hot lap. It's a... 
I mean, what would you do in the real world in the race? Would you have hit the anchors? Well, yeah, I mean, you, if you know the, you know the, the lap is going to start in the next, like, two corners, and you see this massive pileup, either you go past like he has done, or you go, okay, well, there's a whole row in front of me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out of it. So it's not like he didn't commit and he went straight past. He went straight past him. It's not like he was trying to mess them about. Yeah. Um, I don't think. I don't, honestly, I don't think he's done anything wrong. It's not like he's trying to get in front of them to block them or whatever the case is. He's seen that they're slower. He's already started pushing from the beginning half of the lap, and he's gone and he's made a move and he hasn't like gone out the last corner and backed out of it kind of deal you know he's gone yeah. for his lap so i don't i personally i don't think he's done anything wrong and um i think you know if the guys are going to want to back out and make space and do whatever the case is then that's what they need to do and if someone's coming up from behind them a little bit quicker and they make their way past without any issues i don't think there is an issue it says i, I agree with you 100 percent, yeah because i mean j just what I find puzzling as well is like, like you've got to start building momentum to start your qualifying lap and you're not going to start building your momentum with one corner to go. So, you, you know, I think, and that's what the drivers need to be aware of as well. You've got the whole long back straight here, Paul Ricard to get heat into the tires and do whatever you need to do. And then slowly you need to start getting yourself sucked into that zone that by the time you're coming up to that last corner, you are up to race pace. And, and that's what it feels like. I, we can't see what he was doing earlier on the lap. But that's what it feels like, that he's in the zone, he's ready to start his, his flying lap and comes up on the back of three guys that I don't know why they're doing that at the final corner. Yeah, I think they're all making space for themselves, which is fine, you know, but he's come around the right-hander before that long left-hander, already committed. And he yeah. sees, the, sees these guys going slow in front of him, so he doesn't back out. He goes and he drives past them straight away and then he carries on going. He doesn't yeah. then back them up and then go again, you know? Yeah, I've got, I've so got no I don't think yet. he's done anything wrong now. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't broken any laws, but uh, the the question the, it's definitely more about, you know, a um, a culture thing in the but, sim racing but, community. Yeah, but the sim racing community, now I'm gonna be controversial here, I need to then catch a wake up and start bitching and moaning about stuff because at the end of the day, we, we're looking at this from a real racing perspective. And and what he's done there is is not no one's gonna frown upon that. Had he have gone through that corner and then backed everyone up, different story. But you know, yeah. he's 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 got on with it. He's trying to get his, his first hot lap out the way and he wants to set a, a time. And if you like, that's what I said earlier, if you're going to leave yourself space, leave yourself space. But you shouldn't be looking for space with two corners to go. You should have yeah, given 100%. yourself the space five corners earlier. And you've got a long track to muck around and get yourself space. That whole back straight gives you an opportunity to see where the guy is. But my feeling is once you're through turn 10 and you're starting the run to the start finish, that is when guys need to be picking up momentum, not slowing down and looking for space then. Interesting. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> Sorry, was that a bit hardcore? I don't no, think no. Jonathan expected that response. <laughs> no, no, that's cool. I wanted a, I wanted a discussion on it. We got it. It's cool. Okay. Watch um, me get abused on Twitter tomorrow. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Marius, you, you taking the flat for this one. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Let, next. let everyone remember we agreed on something, Taz. It's awesome. This is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next incident was lap one, turn one of the pro race. Something we didn't necessarily see um, in the stream, but uh, a interesting incident nonetheless. Okay, so we have Krobler number 488 in the Mercedes. Yeah, they're crossing the line. And Kieran Patterson as well, yeah? Correct, yes. So Krobler now is going to make a pretty decent um, start here. He's going to make up a couple positions there and then... Uh. Okay, now we need to see this from inside the car because uh, this is very interesting. Or even here. Yeah. You see, he, he makes... On his first break, he makes up at least a position, but then he makes a second move. Uh, mm -hmm. That yeah, second okay. move goes up the inside of Kieran and contact is made and... Surprisingly, a lot of guys got through that. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, just a bit yeah. greedy, you know. He's actually done well enough. He needed just to have stopped, turned, and everything would have been good. Look at that; that was perfect up to the end. Yeah, sort of think, yeah, no, he's he's definitely in the wrong. Yeah. yeah. So definitely here, you, I wanted to show you the brake light. So he's braking, 
Let go, break again. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a definite double move, and he should not have. That was definitely, like you say, greedy. And that's uh, avoidable. Absolutely. He had it yeah. done. He had it done. You didn't need to. Yeah. He would have made up three positions on that, on that first turn. Yeah. That's an easy one. <laughs> Question is, what penalty is that? Mm -hmm. 15 well, seconds. Well, he's kind, of, he's kind of already given himself a penalty. But he's yeah, also taken someone off. else out. Ah, so. And Patterson, too, though. Yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, he did affect another, I think it was three drivers. Yeah, I saw, I think, Gray as well in the Audi also spun, I think. Yeah. But well, you need to give him the penalty that, Ooh. yeah. Oh, he caused big con there, actually. <laughs> yeah. He's like. Uh, yeah, you so, got to give him a decent penalty for that, I guess. Maybe, so, maybe a, a no quali, maybe a no quali run. Uh, I, th I think that that might be a bit a harsh. harsh. Um, I just look at how many people got collected because of that. Yeah, yeah but he also hasn't made trouble before this, so you no. can't really just go and give him one <laughs> massive penalty I'm, I'm and having, be like, I'm having a bad, naughty I'm having a bad boy. Under. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> naughty boy. Okay, back of the grid for you. <laughs> I, th I think we can sit. We considered a 15-second penalty. He also did penalise himself in the incident. Um, and nothing. 15-second penalty for when in this exact race, or yeah, yeah in the so race. it added to his time and yeah. it all affect his finish result. Fair, fair enough. And, and a warning. Yeah. 15-second and a warning. I think that's fair. Yeah, the warning is yeah. definitely yeah. important because it, it involved so many guys, eh? Yeah, I mean, and if he does do something silly in the next race, then he obviously gets a harsher penalty. That's yeah. correct. Much. Okay, fair enough. So that's that's pretty cut and dry as well. Okay, now next incident is the run off of this incident. So now affecting two other drivers, Miller and Kleb. In the so same cool. corner. Uh, no, no the next it'll be corner oh, four, okay. probably. Yeah, corner Clip four and five. The Aston. Oh. Aston versus Aston. Aston versus Aston. Miller and the Aston as well. So that's turn one incident. <laughs> Cleb gets through that. And then he's coming up to the next turn here. The Lamborghini goes past him. But then under brakes, he goes past the Lamborghini again. And tag, tag. Ah. Up, oh, geez. So I don't know about this one. To be fair. <laughs> I don't know if it's his fault or if it's the Lambo's fault. Half oh, thing no, he's he's the door running, on him, hasn't he? No, he's running far too hot there. Eh? Okay, that's yes, from the Lamborghini's perspective. Okay, no, I actually think he didn't go in too hot. I think in. If I can just say my opinion straight away, it's that, okay, Bellingham goes past. Kleb does break late, considering how much traffic there is, yes, but their lines just converge there. I don't think Bellingham... Does the Lambo change direction and go left, or does he stay straight? Yeah. So, like, we need to see his on board again. He goes slightly left, and then Kleb is going slightly right. And I think they're... they're Lines simply converged. What I mean, what I mean about going in hot is like, you know, you've got your racing line, but if there are another five or six cars all going slower, you've also got to take that into consideration because yeah, he came pop, corner, he, for sure. Yeah, he came popping in here. Check this. Yeah, I don't know if that's a Lambo's fault. To be fair, actually, actually, it's you a Lambo. make a valid point. Okay, if you if you look at. The speed he's entering that corner, I don't know if he would have actually made it. No, to. no. But did he touch the Lambo? Because yeah. Yeah, he does touch the Lambo because you can know. see he gets, he gets hit. But check the Lambo. Let's see if his hands change direction here on the brakes. Yeah, he does go slightly well, left. Yeah, no, but he goes directing. slightly left to open himself up for the corner. Yeah. Not yeah, necessarily. Yeah. Not, not, yes. I don't think the Lambo is at fault here. I just think Clem just needs to be aware too. of what's happening around him. And, and adjust your pace accordingly because it's busy. I mean, there are four or five cars going into that corner. Yeah. My feeling. I think he I crowded him too much a little bit. Yeah, self-inflicted, I think. 
think, think he just crowded it. Put it a he's bit. taken Miller with him. You know, you, you know what ended up happening there too? Because have a look. The door got closed on his outside as well because the guys are turning for the corner and he didn't leave any space for that. So he's got a Lambo that's trying to get through the corner. He's got a car on the outside that's turning in. So he's basically getting a narrower and narrower gate to play. And have a look here. Have a look and the before car. the braking zone, the Lambo is ahead. He's Watch out. Now he's got a turn. You see, I mean, that's... Oh. Yeah. I mean, the question would be, would he, would he have been able to make the corner cleanly if he wasn't tagged by the Lambo? I, let, let me just say, the Lambo, I don't think, is at fault at all. No, no because, but you also see he comes from behind on the brakes. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But the Lambo is already on the brakes before Kleb decides to make the move. Yeah, so, that, that. I, I think he's just coming way too hard to be fair. Totally. I'm pretty so, sure that's what I said right in the beginning. <laughs> So do we... Yeah, but he, he's self-inflicted. He's got his own penalty here because he spun. Yeah, but he spun Miller as well. So, so if it was just him, we could yeah. it could be a racing incident. But unfortunately, oh, did he, oh, did he spin Miller? I didn't see. Yeah. Did he spin? hits he hits him in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, and he he's spins just, him. Yeah. Yeah, no, he just went in there way too fast, actually. Okay, so then it's the usual 15. corner spin penalty, fifteen second for Kleb. It is oh, correct. I, I was very tempted to say that it was a racing incident, but I think mm -hmm. you guys are spot on that his entry speed is way too hot. And I question whether he would have made the corner cleanly without John, the tap. Well, John, well, that's, why he collects, that's why he collects the other driver. Yeah. But John, it's just what we've been talking about as well. Is like it's a 50 minute race, and you know, guys are trying to win it in the first three or four corners here. Um, and, and that's it. It's so busy and you've got to adjust your pace according to what's happening around you. I mean, it's not that you've got to go snail's pace, but yeah, I mean, he's he's like 30% quicker than anyone else under braking here. For I sure. Don't break. And you know, I mean, credit, credit to a lot of these other drivers, especially here in pro, you can see like when Krobler's incident in turn one, and even this one here, a lot of the drivers are taking that approach where they want to survive the corners. So yeah. they're... They are driving according to who's around them. They slot in behind the guy that is in front of them and they're not taking those chances because the race is long. And within the next lap or two, you're going to slot yourself into your pace gap, which is basically your, you know, your, there'll be a natural place for you on the track. Place for yeah. you on the track, uh, yeah. dependent on your pace. So surviving this first lap is super important to the rest of your race and everybody around you so yeah i just you know i look at that lambo you'll say oh well the lambo touched me and put me into a spin but at the end of the day you've also got to be aware sometimes it feels like the guys drive with blinkers on so he sees the corner and he goes i'm on a qualifying lap there's no other car around me i'm taking the corner mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing. There is no perfect racing line in the first couple of laps because you're fighting with four or five other cars. So you've got to be cognizant of that and everyone's got to leave a bit of space. So you can't just yeah. assume to take your line like he's come through there on a racing line, which is great if he was on a qualifying run, but there are five other cars there now. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, I think so if the number didn't collect him, he would have collected the other guy regardless. Yeah, yeah I think he's going for this Porsche, what, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and the, the Lambo just uh, nudged him and spun him into the... The Lambo actually helped him. <laughs> <laughs> Turned him a bit. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, that's pretty cut and dry then. Well, it wasn't pretty cut and dry. It was... No, we all agree dry. though, so that's cool. Yeah, we do. Okay, so next incident is the final one that we have for the evening. This is... The big one. The big one. Fasaki versus Wilkin. Ish. This is down the back. Okay. I just want to say, I mean, obviously, you had some technical hassles at the time, Jono, so you couldn't yeah. award any of these sort of penalties in race, which is why we're looking at it now. But, yeah, this is an interesting one. Okay, first touch. Problem. That's a bit wide. And then uh, Fisaki takes the position, and now Wilkin is going to attack back. Fisaki leaves space. Survival. Oh, hang on. Can we just, can, did you just see what happened there? That is exactly a replay of what I was, what we were talking about in the pro ams. Yeah, that's that same corner where two cars so, went around that corner side yeah. by side, no problem. Anyway, and sorry, absolutely, yes. that that was that was a textbook of what should be done when somebody is up on the inside of you, though. So this first incident here is mm -hmm. quite unfortunate. I mean, it doesn't have a lasting effect, but it was still. A bit cheeky. He was trying to go up the inside and contact was made, pushed walking wide. 
Now here, Wilkin is overtaking. They go through double wide, and then Wilkin goes past. Yeah, this is naughty here. Uh, and this is where the the main incident happened. Yeah, and collects no, best and web as well. Is, Fasaki should be in trouble for this whole thing. I mean, he yeah. bumps him here. He hits him here, which he, you know, he's putting his nose into something that he knows yep. it isn't space. Yep. And then he continues to do it as soon yep. as Wilkin gets back to him. So. 100%. The, the, when, when we saw that in the race, I was like, but that's a drive through straight away. Um, you know what the interesting thing is, I've mentioned that battle with Jason Upschmeier. That That is the racing line that Charles was taking through that turn 11 because it is a double apex. Um, yeah. So you do you do cut the corner Ooh. first, then you run out wide and then you turn in again. But I mean, he's okay, collecting watch, Jason watch, watch. as well. Yeah, now watch this line here, okay, or this angle. So obviously here, totally guilty. I mean, close the... Wilkin was trying to close the door, take his... And you can go tight there on the racing line for that first you, apex. You, you have to, yeah. Okay. But then this corner also, this is actually a very good corner. Yeah, I mean, Shaul doesn't run into him. He leaves him uh, space. He... But then watch this line by Fasaki here. Yeah. Wilkin, Wilkin, <laughs> He's Wilkin's not even turning for the corner. I mean, he did drift out a bit, but Wilkin knows he's there. Why yeah, is Wilkin but... closing the door so much? I don't necessarily think Wilkin was closing the door. Yeah. I mean, he if knows you he's watch, there. He's if got, you he's watch got radar. the... Yeah, I mean, if you watch Fasaki from that point of view and you see the distance to him and the curb versus a little bit further where he actually makes contact with Wilkin, that distance actually grows to the distance of the curb. And the, the, it's a right-hander. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. driving off the curb. Well, exactly. And then, then, and then he's Wilkin at fault, is, isn't it? Wilkin knows he's there also. Yeah, Wilkin's but you taking, know what? taking the corner as as it is, okay? So he's keeping the same yeah. radius around the corner. So I don't think he's necessarily doing anything wrong. Um, but at what, at, at what point, I'm with you on this, Taz, at what point does the driver actually back out? Because you now know you're not in front. You're actually not even door to door. You're actually three quarter. You're, behind, you're on the rear wheel. So you then have to back out. Look here, they're not door to door. No, but he's turning into Wilkins. He's no, no. not actually even turning around the corner. No, but, 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 that, but that's my point. I'm saying at what point he needs to then back out because he actually isn't in with a shout anymore. Yeah, I, I think he is. Fasaki's definitely wrong in this entire situation. Yeah, I'm cricket, say. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's no, just. I'm just, I'm just um, being the. the the voice of the opposite voice. If you watch, you right now. yeah, watch his hands now. The, the corner's going right, but he's not necessarily carrying on turning right. He's just kind of leaning into Walker. Look, I don't, I don't think that was that bad, Taz. His hands there. I mean, he, he's following, he's following the line, and obviously he's not on the optimum racing line because he's lost that on the previous corner. So Wilkins got the proper racing line. He's on a bit of a compromised tighter line in. And that's why he's obviously drifted mm -hmm. out a little wider because you, you, you're not on the right line. So that's what I'm saying. At some point, you then need to back off because you're on a compromised line and you both live to, to have another battle. Have a look here. I mean, the, the, he isn't on the right line. He shouldn't be on the curb there. Well, you know what I mean? He's yeah, yeah, actually think... got to play with. Look how much more he's got to play with. And yeah. Well, I think, I mean, you guys raise a valid point. If you look at Wilkins' line. Now, yeah, if you look at Fasaki's line, he's not like changing line drastically. But if you look at Wilkins' line, he's holding line perfect. Yeah. He's not yeah. going. He's not actually going inwards, whereas Fasaki's going outwards. And I think it's a very fine line. I think if Wilkins was closing towards the, um, if Wilkins was closing towards the the rumble strips there, I think yeah. it, it would maybe be a different outcome of the, you know, of the investigation. Yeah. But you know, I, I think, think Fasaki just had so much more. Like he was moving away from the right hand curb where he mm. could have stayed holding the right hand curb. Mm. Yeah. But, but yeah, Taz, perhaps, Taz yeah, for, 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 him, for him to be able to do that, he's got to come off the throttle. Well, yes, he's, exactly. He's but, the car behind. But that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. That's what guys don't do. They, 
you're not on the right racing line so then you are compromised so you've got to change your approach so he would have needed to start backing out there because he can't hold that line through there but i mean yeah. can we just give a high five to jason webb that is fantastic sa drift champion some fantastic <laughs> skills in that amg work <laughs> for him to collect that slide brilliant love it you know where i think fasaki is going to feel very grumpy and aggrieved is that we blaming him for this um, turn 11 incident. But I I'm just going to say to Arno, go and have a look at that final 15 minutes with Jason and and uh, Klaassens. Uh, I mean, Leslie, well, you find, go and have a look at that. That is the line through that because you clip that apex on the inside, you run it out wide, and then you've got the second apex to bring the car around. So if he watches that, that is the perfect racing line. It's not that Charles was defending that line over aggressively. It's his corner to take. And Fasaki makes a move here. Check here. He realizes. He gives him space. And he thinks, no, I'm going to have another go at it. There. You see? Yeah. Should have backed out of it. Shouldn't have done that first. Yeah. 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 Th I, I thank, think thankfully, not, not, you know, it wasn't worse of an incident, that one. But, yeah, I think you guys are spot on about this second incident. He, he does run out left. You know, he, he could have he stayed on the curb. But look where he's touched him. You, you see, you see. This is my yeah. point. You are not. You're not going door to door. So the minute you are sitting on the rear wheel, it is your responsibility to avoid contact. That, that, that's my feel as a driver behind. I'm because saying. yeah, well, that, that, that goes. So the pure passenger. fact that Wilkin is not changing line. Exactly. He's not crossing over onto Fasaki's side. Fasaki's moving yeah. over onto his side. Yeah, if if there was if the lines were converging, it would be a completely different story. Yeah, but it still is. I mean, have a look. He, he's hit him on. He's hit him on the rear. That's yeah. only one, only one driver's ever at fault in that case. Yeah, I think. Um, well, unfortunately, there's two incidents here. So oh, he's wrong in both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but this, so this, this, but this first one here where he knocks him out wide, there's no loss, there's not a massive lasting effect, but he did take the position after, yes, um, uh, after uh, the contact. And I, th I feel that's worth about five seconds, yeah. Um, and, wor and I'm worried about the web collecting because Jason got collected in 10th position, yeah, that was what their battle was for, you know, so he's yeah, collateral yeah, there as well. Um. But I remember when we were watching this live, we were actually saying he must give back that position. Yeah. You know, remember that in comms, Tams? We were saying he's got to yeah. give it back because he's knocked him wide. He's, he's taken that. And, and we thought he would do that. But, well, no, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do we worry so, about Jason being collateral in this as well or not? Um, well, that's kind of just bad luck, isn't it? So you can't really yeah, do that's, much. That's racing incident. But, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all in the bigger picture of things in that, you know, so so do we do we give him the 15 plus a five yeah <sighs> or, well, I, yeah. yeah and i reckon he needs a warning to be honest with you because he's done it now twice in two corners and I, I just think he could have avoided both both instances agreed i mean we could be even more hectic and it can be a qualifying ban yeah Look, I think I think a qualifying ban. Maybe it's. To, I think the qualifying ban needs to come in when they've made a mistake in a race. They've had a, a, warning, a warning and they've and done it again. Then agreed. we've got to take agreed. a little bit harsher. Yeah. But I think right. this is his first, first time. time he's done something like this. Yes, yeah. he's made two mistakes in two corners, um, but he's going to serve a penalty for it. And I think he needs to learn that you can't force your way past someone from the rear end of the, of yeah. the car in front of you. Agreed. We do have a qualifying ban in one of these instances, one of these incidents where I don't have a replay for it on hand, but the driver spun the driver in front of him and they both spun off track and then he rejoined the track unsafely and caused another incident. And that's two major incidents which together form the qualifying ban whereas this is a major incident and a minor incident yeah and i think also so, the, the 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 joining the track in an unsafe manner is something that's in every driver's control and that's something that you you've got to be stern and serious about because that does cause chaos whereas this yeah. is in the heat of battle racing so you know i understand the timing penalties yeah make more sense yeah and i think neither driver wanted to give way so heat of battle like you say but 
unfortunately one guy is at fault in this one. Yeah. Yep. Hey. And that's it. That's what we have for tonight, guys. Hey, hey can I tell that's you what? It, next, <laughs> next Monday night, next Monday night's going to be chaos because we're going to Monza. And what is yep. Monza? <laughs> chaos. <laughs> chaos. <laughs> and then you've got to stop for a chicane and then you go as fast as you can and stop for a chicane. That is going to be, well, you're going to be busy, Jonathan. No, no. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully everyone's learned from their mistakes over the last couple of rounds and they behave nicely at Monza. But, you know, they're yeah, all yeah. racing drivers. So, yeah. The, yeah, and look, uh, I mean, let's just reiterate that 99% of these incidents are mistakes, guys. We understand that. We're not, we don't want to, we don't want to kick you out the championship or like put you in jail or something. These penalties are literally just to show you you know that you did something wrong learn from it improve and you know take the positives out of it it's not an attack on you now listen you can't come into motor racing with a, a sensitive and precious little outlook in life because you're right this is not someone saying oh you an idiot you messed up it's just this is part of racing and these things are going to happen sometimes it's going to be your mistake the next time it's going to be someone else's so you're right it's not a personal attack but this is what happens in, in racing it gets handled and dealt with in the same way and it's nothing personal um it just it, it, it is what it is but yeah. i just think the, the nature of the monza circuit so particular in terms of break points and its bottlenecks through the flipping bizarre chicanes i think people are going to fall over each other very easily <laughs> there so i really hope the guys are spending lots of time practicing and um just remember it's a 50 minute race and you're not going to win it in the first chicane for sure. I think uh, Monza, what I mean, we we have a risk of the field spreading out, but we yeah. also have usually very good racing at Monza. So yeah. it should be very exciting. Well, listening to, I mean, old Zaya and then we're saying, oh, the Porsche is going to do badly there. I mean, they've been saying that every race <laughs> and yet the Porsches keep flipping winning. Yeah. So what, yeah you, said to, you said to us the, the Mercs run, run really strong there. Um, it'd be yep. interesting to see that Aston because it did look like it was suffering at Paul Ricard down the straight. So hopefully its balance of performance will be a little bit better at, uh, at Monza. But it's going to be another cracking race. And that's that's next weekend, Sunday, um, coming to you with the Pro-Ams at 3 o'clock and the Pro Drivers at uh, at 5. I mean this weekend. Oh, but you know what I mean. This weekend. Yeah, <laughs> is, is it the weekend already. Um, any sure. final thoughts, Taz and Jonathan? No, I think um, everyone needs to just behave a little bit more on track and just give each other a little bit more room where it's needed and um, we're going to see less incidents but yeah I'm looking forward to some carnage <laughs> at Monza <laughs> it's always nice for spectators but never as a racing driver <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I'm looking for sure. forward to the racing and uh, we'll see if these guys have learned from their mistakes or not yeah I think I think um, over the course of the series I've definitely seen an improvement on the on the drivers you know getting a feel for each other and perhaps perhaps they're racing in the same um group of guys each round and and mm. i feel there's an improvement in the driver respect incidents will always happen i'm always going to be in a job here but um i think it's it's improving and i think guys just learn from this Jonathan, you, you've, you've made a great point. And Taz, I'm going to bring you back in here before we do wrap up. But that is what makes it so good. Like you think of a season in Polo Cup. You start learning the characteristics of the other drivers because it's weekend, weekend, you're racing door to door. And you start understanding and, and that respect does come. And I think especially in the pros, that top 10 hasn't really changed in the last three races. So those guys really are getting a feel for each other. And it was a great race to watch because you're right. The guys are actually treating it um, like they should with respect. When the opportunities are there, they go for it. But they're also not putting people in compromised positions. So it was really good to see that. Yeah, I mean, and, and if we can watch more racing like that, that's it, what everyone wants to see. We want to see close side-by-side -side action. And I mean, yes, rubbing is going to happen. It, it happens in real life. But at the end of the day, they also need to treat it like they like an actual race. I mean, you're not going to go and smash into the person in front of you in real life because you <laughs> it's going to cost you a lot of money, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, if they can do side-by-side -side racing and give each other room and just give each other respect, um, I think we're going to see some really awesome racing. Happy days. 
Well, guys, that's it. Jonathan, thank you always coming with some really cool um, and, and and some some different opinions on uh, on these incidents as well. So thank you for all the hard work that you put in, putting all of that together for us. And yeah, this weekend, Monza, it's a Lee. Maybe the Ferraris can win. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Have a great <laughs> evening. Practice and uh, keep it safe on the road and on the sim. Zone now. Having a great strap! I don't